Okay, it's been a great day. Thank you so much, the speakers, and also everyone for being here and also for staying here and not going back to, uh, yeah, to digest everything. The different opinions and six different sides of the copyright universe. I was impressed by the like concentrated fields of interest, like also being very specific with uh, Marsha McLuhan or also with Marta, with your very performative um, presentation, and then with your very passionate one. Yours was very interesting because it was so passionate, but then also very concise, and like the air got very thick, and we could have all, you know, cut the air then. And <laughs> and Promenos, also your um, talk, um, and also that you're such an amazing specialist is. Yeah, that brought so much to the whole conversation. Yeah, of course, you as well, with a very artistic and performative and um, edge to it, and the activist side. Yeah, so I think it's good to have conversations really between each other, and also maybe, um, yeah, we could start then on, on, well, it's supposed to go now project into the future of where we see then the next steps of copyright. And maybe like we can also think about, okay, not just copyright, but the artistic rights that we have. From being American and living in Germany, it just merges into a blob together. That's kind of <laughs> what the symposium is really good to do, is to kind of then zoom into this blob and then see the parts, the pieces of it. Isn't there even a, a feature film about uh, copyright, The Blob? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> okay. The Blob. I remember the that title. Is that an 80s? 80s? Okay. Yeah. It was bad. <laughs> okay. It's still protected. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah, of course. Any questions? Yeah, there was. Someone also said maybe. Okay, we didn't use this word utility, but maybe things like Google or when the companies get so large that actually they're, um, um, one could also maybe shift and demand for different definitions of something like the Google is the service, the Google, because one becomes dependent on certain things and there's also the certain the aspect of the human rights to the information. So one can somehow maybe shift it and think about also things, yeah, which can become then public utilities. I wanted the conversation to also be fantastical and into the future in a way that maybe is not realistic at the moment, but maybe. I have an idea. We, could, <laughs> we can make um, future um, political parties, and we, sh we can also include the audience, but maybe, um, political parties need names. So maybe there's like one party, the political party of creativity. Another one is the party of intellectual property. The other one's the party of authorship. Another one, the party of moral rights. Well, who, I don't know, who, who, who wants to nominate themselves for one of those infrastructure? Who, who thinks that, that one of those terms is the key kind of uh, opt optimistic or like the thing that they want to fight for. Well, what about the digital world? I mean, because if one has these worlds and the frontiers and like, and the high tech new digital world, it's, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it's, yeah, 40% of our world is digital. So maybe there should be representatives in the digital world. I mean, for a while we had things like WikiLeaks also being like the disturbers inside of this. Maybe I just have a question before we start to make political parties and <laughs> I, I need more uh, information. No, it's something that I encountered in the research to be able to articulate a, a statement was, and uh, that's related of course to the digital and maybe also to your talk or and others, is like, um, okay, machines, eh, if you would go in singularity, so you have then a machine eh, which can be completely autonomous, has its own intelligence and make can make creations. Um, and then there is like opposed that a machine can never uh, deliver a cultural 
uh, product or creation or that that's not that a machine cannot do that so i'm uh, yes, i'm very curious how people uh, would think when the machine itself starts to make uh, yeah, a composition or uh, would it be in your yeah. union uh, what is uh, <laughs> is that applied for the <laughs> authorship uh, yeah. I've been visi visiting a, a, a workshop with lawyers uh, recently uh, discussing that question. Um, it was focused on AI. And um, uh, the thing is, it, it, the answer right now focused on AI um, being started and uh, pro pro being programmed by humans. The answer is quite easy. It's like, like a car. Like a like a car driving without humans being on board, the one who 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 is responsible for the car is liable for everything that happens. And uh, in the in in the field of culture cultural products or cultural goods, uh, the same might be true or would be true right now. Um, the one who who does the programming and puts uh, his finger on the start and starting knob. Uh, will be the one who's liable and who who earns the money, but uh, there's an interesting um, uh, um, aspect on 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 a whole other level um, in your question because what 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 could a cultural good ever be? Um, culture is defined by humans. C could an artistic uh, intelligence? Um, uh, for, uh, uh, do you don't you agree? <laughs> okay, okay, but but okay, but so but so so, so we we no, should. With nothing what you are saying actually. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but but th this question is uh, is a special question, and um, if if but, but this is this is interesting because um, um, I'm 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 teaching at a university in Hildesheim, which is a, uni a university focusing on cultural um, um, policy. And um, of obviously, cultural goods are defined from that perspective as those goods um, being made by humans. So there's no question that an AI, AI music might be not cultural in that sense, but it doesn't uh, connect to copyright at all, because it might be licensable. So um, it, it's a dilemma. But isn't it that the author has to be... That the, that the um, even if the the machine would be as as intelligent or as creative or more or less than a human being that a, a machine can never be its own under the current system the machine can never be recognized as the author of its creations i heard that it was actually the companies hmm. and it wasn't the programmers it was the uh, companies paying them they are the owner yeah yeah, but it's much more complicated because the software that you use, it might there might be some big plugins that are that were programmed by DeepMind or by uh, IBM or by uh, Microsoft, and then one has to adapt it, and you have to make it uh, so that it recognizes, let's say, MIDI files to make actually music out of it. So this is already a blurry situation. And the other question, if that is considered to be an artistic output, even that it's based on machine learning, which is which was ultimately programmed by humans. But since we know what mach machine learning is, it is something that is um, generated. It's, it, yeah, it's it's it sort of uh, an in from a, a, a content is generated independent of humans. So the outcome and the connection to what humans did, it's kind of a loose mm. connection. So then. Uh, I would say it's an it's an it's an old thought to think okay there needs we need to find the human behind it why not why not say okay it is it is based on machine learning it's something else that's coming out and this result is something that might enlarge the perspective of we, what of what we could consider what of what art could be considered so this I think is is actually quite interesting because this is possible and this is actually what you hear and what you see with those with those uh, results. And then the question of monetarization, this is a totally different question, which I'm not so much interested in, because in most cases, and also all these Europeans that are sitting around here, most of the content is already paid anyway. If you make a film, it is paid by, by tax money. It is paid by television, that's tax money as well. So we are forced to pay for people like you who are making film scores for television. This is tax money. So why bother about YouTube or I don't know who uh, paying additional royalties. I, I I just don't get it. 
This is already this is all already paid. In most in in ninety five percent of the cases, it is already paid. Actually, it it yeah, it's not. Where, where is it not? It's not paid. YouTube didn't pay for years and years. No, but 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 the content that you upload might be paid by somebody else. For example, by television. No. For example, by. Uh, music doesn't work like that in culture. Music is I'm a different music. kind of business. I'm making though. music. Okay. Well, I don't know. It's a different. I don't know, I mean, okay, really? Just okay. before we go back to the money again, which I really try to not do all the time, at least, uh, what is also interesting when you uh, uh, try to listen to the question that Marta asked, um, is to try to think about not uh, like an absolute separation between humans and machines. Yeah. I think, I mean, people that might have read Mouse in 1988, uh, Donna Haraway trying to under make think together with us about what it means when we generate genetic material, when we uh, think about um, uh, genetic manipulation of seeds, etc., etc., which blurs uh, radically the categories of culture and nature. So what is I find really scary is when uh, we start to uh, uh, use the, the regime of copyright to actually reinforce that separation between uh, human and machine. So I think it's not only because it's, we use software and filters, which is part of obvious, is a very obvious co-authorship between uh, creative software and creative uh, humans. There's also humans as a category are not so stable as we would like to think. And I think uh, copyright is <laughs> is a root <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Can I quickly <laughs> pick up on that? Uh, just picking up on the you know the blurring of the boundary line between y humans and machines or humans and technology. I I I I would agree. I mean, Haraway, cyborg theory, even postmodernism, all those manifesto. Uh, yeah, um, like <laughs> d nowadays in philosophy of technology, that's a subdomain in philosophy. It's sort of a consensus. It's sort of, sort of an accepted insight you know humans and technologies it's continuous you, you can't really m draw a separation line between those two okay granted but i do think that on top of that or beyond that there is still another matter and you could call it an ethical question or uh, sometimes even a practical question but practical questions uh, if you track them down eventually um, well come down to some ethical problem uh, the ethical question of notwithstanding the fact that we're at a very basic level continuous with technology and with all sorts of other things, we still have to make decisions in in everyday life about okay. you know. But then I have a proposal for. But wait, let me let me let me finish. You, we, we, you have to make decisions about um, like there's this like neurotechnology or um, nanotechnology. I mean, all these things are impinging on our, well, the boundaries of our bodies, for instance. Uh, Far-reaching um, reproductive technologies. We have to make ethical decisions about those, those kinds of things, even though at a basic level we are continuous with those technologies. So there's two levels here. There's, there's the basic, uh, well... In philosophy, we call it ontological level because we're continuous on a very basic level. But then, on a on a higher level, uh, in everyday life, in in uh, but also in societal life, in in policy making, we need to make decisions about well, how do we really want, how far do we really want this merging to go? And I think here, pretty much the same uh, issue is at stake. If you Okay, we can uh, if if like machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, develop far enough so that you could um, convincingly say of an artistic production made by a machine learning system. Okay, this is art. This is art. We we all agree we, we can call this art. Still, then there will be this question, this this ethical question. But do we want this? Do we want this? Maybe we want to define art as a human thing. And to that extent, I think there's nothing wrong with a with a doses of of humanism. But uh, I think what's maybe something that your answer seems to imply is that um, 
that you say on one hand we are continuous, but you imply somehow that the ethical decisions are always on the side of protecting the human from technology when I think it's quite not really the case in a way. So, I mean, even from, if you would talk about, for example, like reproductive technology, there was also like a great amount of reproductive technology used to uh, sterilize people, which you could say is like a, a huge incursion into the body, even if it's not a growth of a test tube baby outside of it. So I think like there's a kind of problematic kind of the, I, or I think the I think the eth I think the ethics that you're describing is not really true in a way or it hasn't been the case it, it isn't only historically. about it isn't only about refusing you could also have uh, the ethical consideration the whole uh, process which doesn't doesn't ever appear like this in a pure form I mean it's it's something that happens over time and and in a scattered way but you could also decide let's merge you could also decide it's good to merge. I mean, in, in those abstract terms of do we want to merge or not. But in some cases, you might want to decide, no, it's not a good idea to merge, even though all sorts of evolutions are pushing towards that. And so it is ambivalent. It is problematic. So at a basic level, there's this continuity. But at a, at an, at a higher level, or whatever you want to call it, higher or lower level, at another level, there, there are questions about which we can decide in in society and 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 in a social setting um, I, I, I was <coughs> wanted to make an, a, a proposal uh, for not a political party but but an alliance <laughs> um, and that would be uh, the alliance of uh, independent interdependence um, because I'm interested, I'm in. <laughs> I would be interested to think together. Uh, together, I mean, really together, because we're in this together and a bit more, uh, with a bit more <laughs> than uh, than than us here sitting on these chairs. Uh, is how do you um, think about uh, in interdependence in a way that does not resolve all borders? How do you think about interdependence in a way that um, is somehow providing space for different forms of life. So not just one way of being an author, but many ways of being an author. Uh, not just uh, one way of uh, making money, but different ways of m uh, making a living. Not just making a living for humans, but also life outside uh, uh, us here. And so it's a difficult question, uh, because it somehow needs to think about independence at the same time as it needs to think about interdependence. I think that would be, uh, I would be interested in, in, in what the program for this alliance would be. And maybe what's interesting there, what I would like be curious to hear their opinions is like, how do you, uh, if, if for example, uh, you would bring in the notion of queer, then how do you um, promote a sense of like relation, relationality without, um, privileging um, strictly relational practices over independent practices? That's another question. Yeah. <laughs> anyone has an idea. Uh, yeah, I wanted to add one, one more part into this kind of question, which was thinking along something that you said, Femke, about the idea of like authorship as a practice, and to think of that independent of the idea of authorship as an identity or as a status or as something kind of legally enshrined, and if, if thinking in terms of practice uh, could sort of open some of this up uh, in different ways. But that's, a, that's an open question to the panel. Yeah, well, when you were asking about the alliance of interdependence, I'm lately Indep a little... Independent interdependence. I independent interdependence. Uh, lately, I'm uh, so much drawn to this... Uh, uh, it's like uh, this Karen Parrott wrote on uh, the queer uh, uh, nature of per performativity uh, or the queer performativity of nature <laughs> and she uses, uh, she uses <laughs> uh, this <laughs> word intra-action uh, and intra-action it seems that uh, it's not anymore to constitute the other or object subject uh, or uh, in an environment or in a nature or anywhere um, it's like 
it's within the relation and the property of that relation, it exists. So it's not to say I need to have interaction between you and me, because it constitutes the other. It seems that there the author becomes yeah, life itself, or it was a gen genealogy you wanted to go for, yeah, so maybe it's li life itself. But I like this intra interaction. I think I think it is um, um, as we sometimes you see you read in in, in legal theory that uh, you have an inherent problem uh, between technology and law that the law always looks at the past the technology always looks at the future um, and we have an issue of how we actually express it legal terms post humanist concepts so if we talk about the state of copyright as it stands right now an IPR it accepts as legal subjects two types of things, humans and then legal entities. Um, so it accepts as a non-human that can be subject of rights and obligations, but this non-human has its roots back in the industrial era, and it comes from the concentration of capital, basically. Or it is other forms of association of human beings that collectively choose to express their subjectivity through uh, legal forms. So there is a very interesting question: How how could we express legally, um, uh, let's say, um, different forms of collectivity or independent interdependence? And, and I think one. Um, Surprisingly, one of the uh, instruments, which I, I believe, uh, academically at least, that they are uh, expressive of these kinds of, uh, let's say, amalgamation, is the uh, open licenses that contain copyleft elements, because they allow the contributions to be expressed in a form of a, of a collectivity which doesn't have a legal nature. So uh, a piece of software which is um, has been built on an open license and a copyleft license, and this is important, it means basically... Uh, you can contribute, but you have to contribute under the same terms and conditions. And the reason why this is important is because it operates as a sticky substance that holds the whole thing together. So this thing doesn't have a legal uh, entity. It's not a corporation. It's not a non-profit. It's not a, uh, any kind of association. However, it, it acts within the economic and legal um, uh, reality and landscape because it's a piece of software you have to interact with. You you cannot necessarily commercialize it because it may have copyleft, or you could commercialize it, but in a way that actually respects the individual contributions. Now, I think these are early stages in trying to express in legal terms these kinds of uh, uh, again, post-humanist realities or actor networks, which I think it's not obvious how we do it, uh, but it's a serious discussion. If you read the copyright law, uh, the UK Copyright Act dealt with this issue in the 80s, computer-generated inventions is, is the most uh, relevant chapter I can think of, which actually provided the ownership to the person that either invested or made the relevant arrangements for the production of the codes. And they, were, they had in mind generative music, by the way. I think they, they had in mind a lot of Brian Eno type of, uh, of, of works. Uh, and and, and they, they consider they could understand there is a kind of something that actually surpasses the, um, the, the collective, the creative... Uh, you know, scope of the individual. So they had to make what we call a legal construct, and that's the legal construct we we, we came up with uh, as 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 a, as a, let's say as a legal system. Now, what is interesting again is that when you move to the databases regulation directive, which comes in the mid '90s, you have a different arrangement, which is basically it's purely investment. So it becomes hardcore um, tech, uh, you know, economic uh, kinds of of appreciation. However, we lack kinds of structures that actually can appreciate different types of contributions. Um, the, the other, uh, besides the open licenses, the, the copyleft licenses, the other construct which I find interesting is if you look at the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, license, uh, which is uh, basically a cooperative structure, is a form of a cooperative which is a mixture between a legal uh, entity and a license, is a hybrid, uh, which ensures there is no extraction from whatever you produce from the platform that manages that. So I think that's the closest contract we have. And if you see the level of legal, um, th this creature, this legal creature, where, the, where is it positioned? It's not positioned at the legislation level. We still don't have, let's say, the collective knowledge or will 
to legislate. It's found at the contractual level because that's, these are, tend to be instruments which have greater uh, flexibility and correspond, they are easier to actually grasp the, the changes in society and economy and theory and thinking, uh, which is the deepest uh, form. So I think that's where we stand right now. But unfortunately, law is a self-reflective system. You know, it, it expresses itself in its own terms. So in a sense, it has an answer for everything, even if there is no answer. <laughs> Anyone want to follow up on that? <laughs> yeah, no, now we're learning. <laughs> I'd, like a, I'd like to ask a question to Matthias and, and Christian, uh, because, sorry, I don't want to poke up the fire, but uh, you, you used the term conspiracy, right? Uh, when uh, Matthias was giving his talk. So there, it... It feels to me that there's still like this this very uh, deep uh, difference of opinion in in terms of of or with regard to like is there really such a thing as this this huge whatever you want to call it power difference monopoly oligopo oli oligopoly uh, you seem to say no nah, it's not so bad as you make it sound and you say yes it's bad. I tend to agree with the, yes, it's bad, but I'd, I'd be very curious to how you crystallize that discussion. I will start with Christian. <laughs> <laughs> because you spoke less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With all due respect. <laughs> yeah, of course. So um, when we create things, it's one thing. We are, and we are exposed to a world that has platforms that are commercial. And what we see, and now I'm only talking from experience and from, not from a, not first of all from a business perspective. Um, we have the ability to use these platforms. What we see is, we can't sell CDs anymore, we can't sell vinyl records anymore, we can't, this all doesn't work. So maybe the sort of recorded content of uh, music, when we stay with music, this would also apply to film. Um, Maybe this is not the place where it's about making money. Maybe the, the functionality changed to something else, which is something like self-advertising, which is making something public, and also which is making something accessible. Maybe we have to shift our focus, and this is, there's, there's data to that, that, for example, because there was the question, okay, where is the money made when we make music? It is much more made in recent years in live performances. This is where the money is made. And all this is not laughable. It is, this is true. It is true. And uh, the same might, might be true for film. You know, okay, you can, you can show the film, but you have to, and this is nothing new. I'm quoting now a guy from um, a Pirate Bay. New technologies change the business models. This was always like that. People thought with the invention of radio that there would be no more live performances whatsoever. It's turned out to be not true. Now people say <laughs> YouTube is destroying our European whatever cultural world. This is not going to be true because the history, when we look at the combination of media that de determine you, it was very good to, 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 to recount on, on Marshall McLuhan so that we have to see this is a combination, you know, we cannot separate content and, uh, and the platforms. And this is more true than ever, um, because we are using that much more and it becomes a global thing and we see how the boundaries of national and uh, I would say uh, European law, that's national interests, there's only 500 million people compared yeah. to, in China it's three times more people, you know, let's keep it, let's keep it small, yeah, it is because it is still small. Sure. Yeah, so um, if that's the reality, the business models, in parentheses, they are, they, are, they are changing and they are changing. And so to stay with, with some kind of romantic idea of, yeah, but it was so much better 30 years ago when there was no YouTube and then when there was no Facebook or whatever, I think it doesn't make any sense. So we have to adapt to something. And now the question is, is that painful or not? Why should it be painful? You know, we have to we have to abandon GEMA. GEMA, that's a that's a lobby group, a terrible lobby group that is totally intransparent. 
and all these collecting societies are. That's terrible. I'm not in GEMA. Why should I? You know, it doesn't make any sense. Um, this was created in the, in the Third Reich in Germany. This is terrible. And they never addressed this issue. So it's, a, it's, it's, you know, from my perspective, because I was asked, so I'm making a strong point to, because I was asked to. Yeah, so, um, so uh, this, this is the old world. This is like 80 years old, this, this idea. This, we don't need that anymore. So I think we have to we, we, we can we can we can work with these with these um, with these new platforms, but they are extremely big capitalist uh, platforms, and I would totally agree to uh, to to cut them up. And this is also something that happened. It happened with Microsoft before it happened with uh, Standard Oil. It happened with the huge corporations in the United States. This will happen with Facebook and and, and Alphabet as well. It's very clear. Is very clear. So then, it's, this is not enough, from my perspective. But I'm too small to 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 interact with that. So I have to live with something that might not be ideal. But the question is, am I using that or not? Absolutely, am I using that? And it's not a problem. And everybody can do with with with, with my content. You know, protecting the content. This is really old school. This is making it not visible. And there is no money to be earned. Just one example. The filmmaker Harun Farocki, famous guy for, for experimental film, all his films, they are on one protected platform, so it's a proprietary system. So you have to pay for watching the films. In the year this guy died, when he was in all the media, I talked to the people who are running this platform, which is a state-funded platform. Guess how much money ended up in the pocket of the people yeah. that were, the, oh yeah, of the inheritance. 1,200 euro, uh, euro per year. Yeah, that's it. So, so this is, it, it is just not true that there is a way to make money online from our perspective. So if that is the reality, we have to think in a different way. This is all I'm saying. But a little practical question, but GEMA, GEMA, is it like SABAM or is it wrong? Am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Organized differently, yeah. bottom up from artists, eh? not like uh, VZW, which has, uh, okay. Actually, it's a three-class system. You aren't, you aren't uh, correctly uh, informed. Um, so um, let's start with GEMA. Um, first, first, first thing. Um, and I, I, I haven't come here to, to to talk about GEMA in the first place. But uh, the Third Reich uh, uh, story is simply not true because it has been funded by Richard Strauss years before, and uh, it got its name uh, during Third Reich. And it's not the same thing. It's one of those Wikipedia stories that aren't true um, second thing um, the the business models um, um, there is this uh, image we have in our heads um, of uh, the droschken fahrer uh, the, the 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 driver of the horseless carriage um, which hasn't been hasn't been needed anymore when the cars came up so very easy thing um, no one would pay uh, a driver of a horseless carriage uh, when no ho horseless carriage was used anymore. Simple thing. It's not the same thing we have right now with, which, with cultural goods, because um, our goods um, are uh, used in, a, uh, um, in an amount that has, been, ha has not been seen um, before um, uh, at any time. Uh, the 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 the, the, the um Can you clarify that? What do you mean in terms of Do you mean with the revenue of the no, advertising no, 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 no. that's I'm just from talking it? just, talk, or I'm just, just, just talking about the, the, the amount of, of um of clicks and uh, uh, uh oh, the, 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 the Okay. The use. The use, yeah, the use. What? Like experiencing culture generally you think is increasing. The amount of 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 uh, uses of of single uses of films and m music pieces um, on on YouTube is, uh, let alone YouTube is uh, um, uh, counts to an amount that has never been reached before in in this world, uh, in in numbers, 
and uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not against that. And and uh, you you should be a friend of Article 13 because uh, Article 13 uh, enables everyone to upload uh, c uh, cultural goods on uh, to YouTube and the artists to be paid. So um, uh, this is not the point I'm talking about. What, what's happening right now is that we have this amount of usage. But um, at the same time, no money coming back to those who provide the content for the platform. This is what we're calling the value gap. And uh, there's added value on the platform, and we are aren't, um, um, at the table. We are on the menu. And um, uh, so we have a structural problem, not only in, in terms of cultural goods, but only, uh, b but as well in terms of uh, um, um, economics, because uh, uh, the creative industry uh, industries—it's it's a huge thing—are um, uh, among the three biggest sectors, indus industrial sectors in the European uh, Communion. Even if you like, if you don't like um, the 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 uh, capitalist approach to this uh, notion. Um, um, it's true for the moment, which means there is money being made, and there are people who who can who can earn a living by by doing so. So now, come, uh, I'm coming to the point we had before. Um, it's simply not true that authors of music have been paid before. Who should pay them? Um, um, songwriters aren't paid at all because nobody nobody pays them. It's it's simple truth. You, you, you write a song because you have to write a song and you try to find someone who, who, who might be willing to, to listen to it or to provide it or to, to share it or whatever. So then starts the process of earning money. So first thing, second thing, um, public money going into uh, broadcasters, uh, in, uh, going into film production, going into uh, symphony orchestras, um, things like that. Um, I'm a professional composer for for the broadcasting system in the first place, not only, but uh, but in the main uh, in, the, in the main uh, uh, the, the most of, of the things I do are um, VDR or things like that. Um, we get a little money um, for a 90 minutes film. That's about 10 to 12 thousand euros and we have to pay every musician our studio and the work time for it so um, uh, usually there will there won't be anything left to pay our own work because we have to pay the, the mu musicians um, and the technique and things like that I, I, I broke that down to, uh, for, for a seminar I gave and I uh, there were uh, less than 900 euro left from 12,000 euros I got for a feature film so, um, so yeah, but it becomes very technical on a breakdown, eh, because like it's 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 almost like I, I get a little bit nerved eh, because now I want to know in this game how diverse is uh, who are you representing or not? Uh, I, instead of like co talking about economy and have these breakdowns, because like I I feel like uh, it's a lux it's a luxury problem to be able to be. Uh, articulating like that because some people do make songs, you know, and some people do want that other people are uh, listening uh, to their voice, and some people are oppressed because of certain uh, identities uh, they are having, and some people are censored and controlled yeah. by these mechanisms which uh, should give you the return of like. Uh, 12,000 euros you have to divide about in your professional studio working for a state uh, I tell you I, I don't want to uh, unacknowledge uh, your work but like um, I but you, you do you're no no no, no. I, I'm, I'm not even allowed to, to come to an end to an end but like uh, what do I need I mean I, I mean uh, no 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 I can I, I, this, I, is, this I, is kind of cynical because um, the, uh, um, the the people I represent yeah. uh, have to have to earn a living by it and and he he tells you I am paid and I'm not and I'm I'm trying to explain. Yeah. But I, we were also like opening the discussion before to say like let's not talk about copyright and authorship only in relation to the economic and to uh, the market okay, structure. But, but and you go into well, a no, detail then and came then it starts to be okay. like. But I, then okay, came the question. Sorry, but then came okay. You know we have conflicting 
we have some thick air here, so it yeah, was more than just okay, what it is. So. I just want to say, like, in who are taking voice at what time with which kind of details, and uh, that you also have to reflect on your position that maybe this accountancy that you're sharing with us is not the essence of your point. So I would really invite you to go to the essence because I think I, I feel it takes up a lot of uh, space. Huh? on, on uh, the reflections that we try to make for future uh, visions. And it's a budget uh, financial question. I, I don't want to uh, aggress you. I just want to try to say, like, I go to the uh, point of what you want to say uh, okay, without well, numbers. Yeah, I mean, if one talks about copyright, and I think, and also that is actually what it's based on, is then, um, you know, these structures that one has, if they're connected to a state radio or if it's, you know, what kind of micro macro thing, but there's there's this, the divisions that are important, and I think also important to understand just that one doesn't see, um, you know, like privilege or, you know, situations that one doesn't just write it off as such. Because um, I think the labor of music making, it's, you know, it's definitely, one chooses also, it is a choice one makes in one's life, but it's, you know, the time and energy one puts in, it's, it's self-exploitation, yeah. To so, make and short, I think to make it short, I yeah. pay to, to um, produce the music for the public broadcaster, I pay for it. And um, I start earning money when, the, when, the, when my work is uh, being spread over the broadcasting um, through collecting societies. And uh, so uh, if, if my works are uh, um, uh, on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, every, everywhere else, I, I'm not paid. And this is the only chance for me to get paid and for me to pay my musicians. So this is a comp complex situation, and I can't break it down to one word, truth. It's 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 not my kind of framing to 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 get okay. back to yeah. censorship machines. <laughs> but, I, but I think I think um, if if just to understand the the, the, the discussion, uh, I I think there is no um, there is the issue of how the artist is compensated. So I think this is a question. The artist has to be compensated, but it's also an issue uh, which is it has to do more with the representation of uh, of different groups, of uh, different people, uh, the transparency of the governance. These are two separate questions. And I, I think doubt that. That was the point. I doubt yeah. that because what I'm presenting you is the the core of the construct of copyright. Um, yes, no, no, everyone I'm, I'm who, saying, everyone who's an author is in risk. He, he okay, so there are no differences. That's that's the that's that's the point. Then I would like to ask a question because uh, I'm an artist, I make a living, uh, and I'm not represented by a collecting society. I have never made money through copyright and that system. So my income comes from people that want to pay for my presence in debates, uh, my uh, contributions to workshops, to uh, develop research, to write text, etc., etc. So this is money that comes, um, is usually uh, comes through public funding. So it's not a direct uh, payment of me as an individual author, but often related to the work that we do as a collective. So I'm wondering how for you um, this model that you describe mm -hmm. where you need to set up a situation where individual authors are being uh, remunerated for uh, works that they sign off somehow could coexist with uh, a type of authorship that is uh, of, of a different, is collective, is uh, much more uh, based on, uh, let's say, uh, presence in situations and, and, and not so related to a product and uh, uh, an, a signing off yeah. um, by individual names. So how do these things uh, uh, co uh, coexist? Or I think they do, don't they? I, I mean, you told me that, that you are an author working on, on, on another level and it, it works for you. And we, we have a copyright regime. But so my question to the to the uh, copyright legis legislation and the thinking of how remuneration is connected to it is how does it uh, produce uh, how does it make authorship possible not just authorship as an in individual production of works that can be remunerated but also authorship that is broader that is let's say uh, the production of culture 
if if we keep yeah. away from. <laughs> of course, uh, it is. So the, the, so the notion of the single author anyway doesn't make any sense. Uh, this so this I don't even want to get into the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I mean, uh, but I mean, uh, but no, no. I'm just talking about the 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 economies that are being. Um, uh, 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 supported and um, voiced through um, collecting societies that, in my understanding, have no support for the kind of work uh, that uh, people like authors, authors like me are. Yes, here. I'm afraid I have to. Oh, you have have to go. Leave, uh, no, but I'm asking. Just, yeah, I'm asking. No, no, just, just, just to respond to that, because. And, and that's my last airport, contribution, yeah. and I'll, uh, then I'll, I'll gracefully have to depart. Um, um, I, I think there are there are very uh, th there are very different market structures in terms of different uh, uh, goods, uh, cultural goods, very very different. So, so, and I know this gets again very uh, technical or economic, but it's it's it, the, the economic behavior of a, a piece of music even from different pieces of music, a different genres of music, is, is quite different because sometimes you have an initial investment for which for some times of music is subsidized by the state, especially if you see more classical, let's say higher art. So they don't necessarily need to make the market the money from the market because they have, uh, uh, let's say, gotten their salary when they actually did the, the bloody thing. And there are other types of, of, of works which you, you actually have to take the risk. And that's why you normally have intermediaries like labels or you have collecting societies which are able to collect because they are very market driven. And then you have academics or you have um, uh, fine arts which, which operate again in very different ways. But I think I, I will agree with you. This is a discussion which is important. We know uh, that we need somehow to ensure that the artist is compensated. And I leave it there because it's a, it is a, a huge issue. But we also need to ask the more uh, other more fundamental questions of representation of different cultural groups, uh, uh, you know, um, different other society, uh, you know, persons, even individuals, not even groups, individuals in, in the creative process, which sometimes because of the structure of the market, they're excluded. And that's the point, part of the point we're discussing here is not just, of course, compensation. I believe it's it's also fundamental. You cannot live without, I mean, if, if this is what you're making your, your money from, you have to live. But at the same time, this representation question uh, is a question to the structures we have already. So if the structures we have already for compensating the artist cannot accommodate the representation of different groups, then there is a problem with them. And, and, and as a, as a self-criticism as well, I feel that, and, and that's why we get very negative sentiments about a lot of European institutions, continental European institutions, is that they, because they have a certain pedigree, they come from certain historical background, which sometimes is not the brightest, um, they contain exclusion. So it could be that they work for compensating the artist, but because of the exclusion they encapsulate, they become appalling mm -hmm. to the people. And that's why they, they uh, sort of raise all this dissent and all this comfort. You know, that's, that's, that's my contribution. And uh, sorry that I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Are there any uh, hello? Are there any questions from the audience actually, or or comments, or uh, desire for for kind of uh, contributions? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Thinking about the future, also, I was wondering. Just it's also a kind of speculation, but we have like billions of microorganisms being part of us as individuals. So if everyone gets remunerated in an <laughs> Honest way, how to deal with these microorganisms? <laughs> like, which who's who's the microorganism person? Uh, Split sheet for microorganisms. I think that's why I think <laughs> I think we cannot uh, do split. Like, we need to somehow find another mode than splitting when we talk about authorship, uh, and and so. This it's important because otherwise we always stay within uh, certain um, certain subject uh, subjects that will <laughs> <laughs> uh, have the right to be remunerated re if they manage or not is another question, but so it needs to f to 
let's say, if we accept the change, that parad paradigm change, then how are we going to uh, live together? <laughs> Our cities now in Europe, uh, the tourism is very high, and tourism is becoming one of the biggest industries in the world. It's becoming larger than weapons. And the tourists are flooding our cities. The people can't live in Barcelona anymore. The, they're fleeing the hordes of tourists coming. Airbnb is flourishing as Uber, and the, that was also part of the conversation. But why are all these tourists coming? Why is everyone traveling? Because of culture. So it's also, actually, we have a big political clout because what happened to Berlin becoming the metropole, uh, world metropole, it's because of all of the, you know, the parties and all that grime and all of the different things happening within the city years and years of the diversity and you know and then that's that becomes though the attractive part of it so I think it's also you know we can also have this uh, well not arrogance but we can have a very strong self-confidence as cultural makers and providers and yeah, I think it's our job then to get out there and also set up then different ideas, different structures, and different forms. And also to not be then, um, yeah, to maybe also look at things like the split sheets. What is it done? What is at the basis of it? Um, how do we put it together? We construct it from the micro uh, divisions and a very maybe ordered way of thinking and what is it about? You know, it's about, we wrote that, we did this, this is how it's put together, this is our right, and this is what we can build from it. I think it's actually an interesting comparison, maybe, because it raises a problem of, uh, like, a, an ethical idea, for example, that, um, that cultural heritage is something to be kind of um, uh, protected because it's it's monetizable, obviously, and so there's a kind of, problem of um, Venice or Barcelona or whatever kind of collapsing under its weight as a as a tourist destination um, but I think that there's a problem as, as well of kind of technological change so obviously it's so much easier to travel than it used to be and that's why it is so easy to go as a tourist to some of these places and I was thinking the same thing about something like the split sheets and maybe that's an interesting question to, to talk about like even the kind of terminology that goes with copyright. I recently looked at the MIDI society or MIDI associations instructions for how to copyright a song. And they spend, I think 60% of it talking about printer settings to print your application, <laughs> which just seems kind of this totally anachronistic thing. Like if I you know, would talk about that with uh, my five-year-old cousin, there probably won't even be desktop printers by the time you know she's 18. Like there will be like no need to sort of print things out at home. So that the moment, for example, you look at like this uh, this kind of platform to discuss authorship, or and let's say another platform to discuss tourism or responsible responsible travel, um, and those things are so specific to like the technologies that we use nowadays, or even that we use previously. Because I mean, even I don't have a desktop printer. So I think this is maybe another interesting question if we still want to talk about the notion of authorship, how are we going to frame it in a way that can develop into the future and won't be kind of obviated by uh, further technological developments that, that will, will kind of change those. So I mean, even for example, the notion of like human versus machine, this is, let's say if you look at Uber, you can see that for Uber, the the obvious goal or priority is to delay any kind of debate about the um, labor rights of their workers because eventually they'll be self-driving cars so they will not even need to have that discussion anymore and there you see the risk of like if we kind of just like protect this idea of the human as it is now then in the future there will be no protection against the kind of exploitative nature of these platforms so any ideas about how to frame these questions of authorship in a kind of not future proof because I think that almost sounds like a kind of attack from the future, but in a future friendly way. <laughs> I think what you are describing, it is, it is a sign for a fundamental change that's coming with uh, these new technologies, especially AI, that uh, many professions will be replaced, but also with the dark side, because there need to be people, and this is sort of the new, like unpaid, 
left out class that provides the functionality functionality of that you know when you have an uber car that is self-driving someone needs to load the car with uh, energy someone needs to clean it someone needs to provide it someone needs to, to repair the tires and clean the window shield and stuff like that so these are jobs that still need to be made and there are all these dystopian books now about a split in society of people that are actually privileged to use this type of services automated services and the others that are in the best sense invisible actually um, science fiction books from China especially they describe this very clearly yes but it's, it's it's quite interesting so what does it mean that means probably that the author is actually disappearing anyway because this will be replaced and so the uh, maybe this maybe it's an old European thinking that is like the one core last um, um, island we have is okay the original author isn't that the point where our Europeanness is best expressed you know the original book the original music the original film but it might be and we see that already you know Netflix series will not be made by authors anymore already now these are algorithms that are based on big data of people that are watching Netflix series this is the future and this is selling so well they're so 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 uh, they're so um, um, successful because of that and so this could be applied in spot at Spotify they are working on targeted music for a specific person with a certain user profile for a specific moment this might be the music of the future this is an algorithm that is doing that so you get a mu piece of music for this time of the day in this moment mm -hmm. you can listen to that and it might be the best music you've ever heard in your life who knows yeah and, and we might come there and this might be great I don't know it could be and it, it's not it's not not great because then the old business model is actually collapsing but I mean there is a <laughs> um, I mean <laughs> I starts to doubt if I should actually use the word author and all its <laughs> with all its weight um, because it seems very difficult to get out of um, this but let's let's stick with it for now um, I think what is important like that's why I'm making the the proposal for the independent interdependent alliance, um, because I think there's a problem of how to, like, how to not uh, stick with um, conventional ideas of separation and split, uh, and at the same time, not to accept that uh, music will be made by algorithms that are about making money fast, because it's it's my problem would not be with the algorithm being an author, but then in with what, um, and I, can, I cannot find what, why, what, like what type of music does it make and, and for what reason, you know? And, and it's for copyright who? free, that's why. It's copyright free I music understand. that you get for the films, for your videos. Oh, of course I understand the, the economic and it's these logic. programs that are built in London. No, no, I understand that that's that's exactly why why it's done. So, um, but I I don't think we should uh, 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 resist. Uh, uh, I don't think we should look away to that type of production as a, as a potential for thinking authorship differently. It's just that we should not uh, um, uh, um, collapse it with the type of production that's being done. So, is then what? How can you do different type of production that is inclusive of other uh, agencies um, that is, uh, that's, that's making uh, the, the work we want to live and live with and hear and, and, and be with. So, and that's, I think, uh, yeah, this, we're only at the beginning of that discussion here, so, but it's important. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say maybe actually one, I was going to say maybe what will be interesting also, uh, if you will answer the question, <laughs> is like also because you mentioned such a bizarre path, especially I thought this this are you you're looking at Matthias? Yeah, uh, this this move from like the the classical to the heavy metal. That I was thinking like because I think you raised the you raised the notion of the kind of thing produced, yeah. that that maybe is an, an yeah an, an interesting thing to for you to to mention because you you represent a let's say genre agnostic um, collective more or less. So, d but then, but do you think that do you think that there's any do you think that it's that it's that there's any possibility then to um, introduce this thing of like what is what is the 
some aspects, some some kind of qualities of the thing produced, rather than just recognizing the work I, as I, an I, intact thing. I I, um, I I really don't know if I understood the question, or uh, from time to time I seem to lose the the um, the red. Uh, yes, the faden. Um, uh, yeah, the thread. But but um, I'll try to to get back to to the thread I have in my head and. Uh, <laughs> Um, um, first of all, um, one one aspect we should bring uh, bring on the table, and it, it's it is there, but nobody um, uh, used the term diversity. Of course, y everything that's connected to culture or coming from cu uh, culture or being brought up by culture um, ha um, is connected to the to the concept, to the idea, to the uh, necessity of diversity. And um, if it were true that um, authors' rights, copyright, um, uh, were a problem for diversity, we uh, we should deal with that. Um, and you would you would find um, um, uh, independent, interdependent, uh, an independent, interdependent alliance with uh, even copyright um, extremists like me. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's not it's I'm not the author. Uh, it's uh, earlier this week um, I, I was called like that, um, and um, but but um, I, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, because if we don't grant diversity, um, we don't need to fight for anything. It's it's so simple because this is what it's about, and my personal belief is that um, without being paid, you can't be sustainable in this diversity. But um, but as I said before, this is only one aspect to the whole thing, and uh, at least uh, one of the other aspects that have to be uh, taken into account is uh, the, the aspect of moral rights and of, of the personality. And so um, I, I really don't know if I... If I'm if I'm close to answering your question, I, I, I really don't know, but... But, um, but um, yes, it's very, very complicated, and yes, it's very, very ambivalent, and yes, I don't know the answers, but I, but I do think uh, we don't have the right common questions so far, which is way more important. <laughs> you have to tell us the common question. <laughs> or <laughs> okay, good, we have a question. <laughs> do you want to, that one has a long... Well, for for me, the whole discussion it's it gets back to maybe what what you were saying. What is the ethics of cultural products? I mean, why are we making them, and what what do we want to be the concept that that holds it? And if it's about uh, accepting reality and just uh, let everything grow uh, and and change business models, that's one way just of letting it go, and just we'll see what happens. But I think culture is 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 about thinking what we want for a future. Uh, together with other human beings, making things together, interdependence and diversity. And I think that's an interesting question to discuss. But what, what is your ethics about cultural products? Is that a question for someone? About cultural products? Oh, I think there should be more cultural products. And I think, I think there should be more companies um, also I, f I actually love the music business a lot. It's really, you make music, you put it out there, and you can get paid for it. And performances also, it's, um, yeah, it's amazing to live actually from one's work. So um, um, I, I really, and it kind of annoys me that there are only three major labels left in the world. It's really upsetting because also, they're not just the major record labels, they're also connected to distribution. And 80, 80 or 89% of distribution of the independent companies are also controlled by these three companies. So um, the thing is, the interesting part now with what's going on and why I really wanted to do this is because, um, because really of Spotify now making contracts directly with artists and the major labels are getting cut out of it. And this is really like copyright is the basis of the music business. Music business is like 17 billion in 2017, and then the publishing business is like another 11 billion. It's a huge amount of cash flow, like running around all over the place, enough for everyone to get paid for any performance talk or whatever they do. 
um, or a song that's played anywhere on the on the radio on where whatever platform, and um, this siphoning off and really taking away from culture and putting it into these corrupt pockets is actually it makes me very upset. So I'm really um, I'm for uh, like um, a knowledgeable um, you know getting up and being part of the conversation and. Um, it actually really, I find it very painful to be just bulldozed down, you know, culture, people that I see, peop music that I hear, that I know should be known by more people, but because of the gatekeepers, because it can't be monetized as quickly and easily on such a broad global spectrum that's just like f filled up with a bunch of crap, you know, my kid is 13 years old and he already tells me he can't find good music because because he said it all sounds the same. I mean, we know that. But someone who I've never said that to comes to me and then analyzes what he finds and why isn't more diverse music actually um, encouraged and supported. It's not. And that's because 2003, the major companies got, by the, then it was six companies, the major labels, or maybe five, they decided that the digital world was un, out of control, peer-to-peer -peer was taking over, and in order to control it, they decided that they would finance fewer artists with all of their investments. So they cut down, like, from the 100% they had, they cut it down at least one-third. And I knew artists at the time, like a group called Pansonic or other artists, who were bringing out music and doing it over Mute and the uh, different companies. They would sell maybe 30,000, uh, whatever, maybe 10,000 albums. Maybe it was a success that they'd sell 60,000 they were cut off from being financed. And it was this whole like spectrum of artists that stopped being supported, that weren't financed, and it was like, because of controlling the digital world. This was strategic. And the music, as a business, it shrank. The world population got larger. There were more people consuming music, but actually they couldn't find music that they liked because there was not enough choice on the market because the major labels decided to encourage sameness. And this is our cultural world. This is culture that's being controlled in this way. So um, I don't know how I can end it. So anyway, I'll just stop there. I don't. I... I was listening because hey, what I feel when you are talking, it's dynamic, you know, like, and it's super nice to, angry. and a little bit angry. Uh, but what I was thinking before is like, okay, what shifted them from this 2003 is like suddenly people own less, so it's less materialized. Uh, let's say there was like CDs, vinyls, cassettes. Uh, it's huge industries who have to produce that also. It's plastic, uh, what is it, all the, the components that it takes to uh, uh, make a vinyl or... Uh, uh, so uh, this is already a shift, you know? So people don't own anymore, eh? they just pay. And actually the music industry was a little bit uh, scared eh, when it was happening, the digital revolution, but they did it very well, you know? People don't own anymore, everybody pays, it's the same revenue as before. So, but in the meantime, they uh, make like, uh, or maybe not, you have other numbers, eh? and we can compare uh, numbers uh, uh, later. But my stance is yeah, not on the numbers, eh? it's not on the numbers, it was just to say like, okay, we, we, we materialized a lot. Eh? And I'm still also scared or something, if I look then at the, uh, future, and that's what I try to say also, is what about the signal? Eh? Because we are talking about creating content and then also like distributing it, retransmitting it, but the electromagnetic spectrum is limited. Eh? And um, it's like highly deployed in that kind of way of like distributing and, and re retransmitting. And um, there, yeah, yeah I, I, I hold my, uh, I, how much are we using our critical natural resources? for our 
cultural uh, expression and which is mostly self-expression, which is uh, mostly mirrored already what is there, the sameness. And so how do we deal with that? And is that maybe an ethical way of looking at culture to see like where it balances with uh, the natural resources it demands to be able to be, able to be uh, creative? And uh, yeah, that's uh, maybe... Uh, Maybe. I think it's a good time oh, to announce the tape. That there's a <laughs> tape <laughs> available. But is it a new tape or is it? Did you re-record pre-record uh, re on existing tapes? Are they new? <laughs> yeah. The covers are. It's existing tapes. Uh, oh, the good. tapes back there. Yeah, yeah the what tapes I here. Yeah. Copyrighted. There are tapes here of, uh, available of copyrighted material. Mixed tapes. <laughs> Mixed uh, tapes. <laughs> um, I was gonna say. Uh, what you uh, what you said now it reminded me of this um uh well you said earlier also you brought up the sex workers and i was thinking there's a common saying from people in the music industry like whatever happens to the music industry will happen to everybody else but probably what happens to uh pornography will happen to everybody else first um or they happen to them first and there's an amazing um podcast by john ronson called the butterfly effect where he looks at the consequences, the butterfly effect of a Belgian guy called uh, Fabian Tuleman who decided that porn should be free online. And um, so one thing, for example, is like I was thinking, well, it's not really true that there's that music is all the same. Like there's way more music available online now from different people that never were compensated ever. And like they probably will never be in the future either. But like it's crazy to say that like there's like I can listen to, you know, like throat singers from Mongolia, like in two seconds. And, you know, EMI would never have put that out like on a binal, uh, maybe, I don't know. But but I was thinking like from this podcast, they say that anybody can basically be a porn star now, but you can only be a porn star for a month. Like unless you're like 19 or 35, between that, the, you can't really work as a porn star. There's like, there's because there's no, there's not enough revenue um, from the mainstream industry because it's all pirated immediately. So they said, what is the jobs now for, for, I mean, they're specifically speaking about women in this um, interval is like custom pornography. And the kind of bizarre things I heard on that, like one guy from Norway was paying um, to for porn to be filmed of uh, these women um, uh, destroying his stamp collection. Um, so I was actually thinking, like, could that also be a solution to this that actually there will be more unique music composed because um, money will just be redistributed in that way that more on a kind of for this personal one audience that maybe how can you divert it from being kind of generated by Spotify just based on like predictive listening I mean, as yeah. opposed to this yeah more possibly kind of unusual, unpredictable forms? I mean, but that's all private to private. And if we don't go anymore from public to private, eh, we don't have a forum anymore, and we don't have an arena to discuss and articulate maybe public uh, needs. Right. And uh, of course, that's a, a model. Eh, to And then mostly the signal, eh, which is going from private to private, is also still uh, private. Mm -hmm. And that's very important. It could, it could, in a way, it could happen same time there's nothing wrong with that you know it could be this private to private if that's a this, in a way it shows only if to me but if to me it shows only that it's a sort of this new media they come up people come up with new ideas how to use them maybe it's not just what we what we like or what we would favor ourselves but it is something that is for, it's it's a sign for for maybe that we can't say, okay, Panasonic can't sell their CDs anymore because of two reasons, because there are no CDs anymore, and then also this type of electronic music, maybe the time is over. You know, there might be many reasons why, why certain types of music don't work anymore the way they did. And now the question is, okay, we can be, maybe if we like that music, maybe we still have the CDs or we can buy them on Amazon used, and where we hate Amazon, but that's the only place we have them. But that's the type of reality we live in. But maybe a new Panasonic won't exist. That's also true. But maybe then something else comes. And I totally agree with you and uh, also people in the, in the audience. There is more music that we can find than ever. And that's fantastic. You know, I threw all my music cassettes away because everything, like I have like super rare, like old classical music recordings from the 20s and like really strange stuff. 
it's all online. <laughs> you didn't digitalize it and put it oh, in uh, on the Oh, this is <laughs> It's not serving the goal. No need. <laughs> Uh, it's happening right now, the, the private concerts. I, 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 I had a talk um, three or four years uh, um, before here in Brussels, um, which was a political talk, and I was uh, hosting uh, it, uh, and there was a young uh, violinist and composer from Lithuania, Lithuania I think, um, who, who did exactly that. Um, she was um, um, studying at a London, in London and uh, did private concerts um, uh, with, uh, with a high performance aspect um, to it. Um, just, not just playing uh, any sonatas or something like that, but, but uh, uh, to uh, talking to the, to, the, to the people who invited them and um, um, finding a concept for the very, f very single performance they did with, with and for them. And uh, it's happening right now, and I'm, I, I'm sure we won't um, we won't be able to to find any disagreement um, um, on, on that very topic. We have so much great music right now, but we have a problem in the mainstream. Obviously, we do, and it's a it's a, um, a problem a problem we have um, um, due to to algorithms um, um, uh, to to the Netflix system, uh, but it's the Spotify system at that at, uh, uh, at that moment because you you won't find any. Um, any uh, intros m uh, any, anymore? You won't find any um, any songs longer than f uh, three or four minutes, uh, because um, uh, people won't uh, listen more than twenty seconds to to a new song in a, in a playlist, and then skip it. And uh, that makes uh, uh, Spotify and Co. Um, um, uh, wanting um, just uh, th songs fitting into this arrangement. So um, uh, um, culture itself changes to, to those constraints, which is, which is um, very interesting and which is nothing that, that might be good or bad. It, it just happens. And uh, the other thing is um, that we have, um, that might be not so good, the other thing. Um, uh, we have a problem to find the good stuff um, it, because it's, uh, uh, that, uh, we have a system of, of um, network effects. And um, and uh, um, Mark Mulligan, uh, an, an analysis of, of music uh, economy, calls it the superstar f uh, superstar economy, because um, 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 uh, exposure makes the money for very very few acts, and it's the acts, not the composers, not the lyricists. It's 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 the singer who makes the money, and the, the most prominent. Okay, yeah, and and some kind some, some parts of the administration. It's a big structure. Yeah, um, uh, not 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 in every case the, the companies. It's it's maybe uh, there's one prominent example from Germany right now. Um, just this week, um, uh, Hel Helene Fischer. Many won't know Helene Fischer, but she's uh, a Schlager. Uh, uh, she she, si she sings sl Schlager. Yeah. What's Schlager in? Popular folk music. Yeah, folk music. No, 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 no. It's 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 pop, popular. Andre Rieu with with a with a, with a female voice, uh, and um, and uh, she's she's among the ten uh, uh, among ten most um, uh, most um, earning uh, best earning female uh, artists worldwide, um, and uh, sh she doesn't write any word or any note for her own music. She's just the voice and the and the face, so the money is there. What do you mean by but just? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I'm an author. I'm not Helene Fischer. That's why I'm I'm talking about the roles, the role models. It's it's a it's a it's a business of prof professionalization. One writes the the, 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 the music. Yeah, yeah. No, they, yeah, someone writes the music and someone sings and dances it, and he's the star, and he won't won't be uh, he will be able to 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 uh, make money out of exposure, but the composers won't. Some composers do. Few. And Few. YouTube have launched now. Um, I got from the digital distribution. I got an email that YouTube Music has now just opened in Japan. I think um, there are different territories now. Of, I don't know if they're here yet. They kind of like gave like a timeline. If one wants one's digital, digital distribution, then one should do it by certain dates of November and December. 
And then within a few weeks, then it will be on YouTube Music. Yeah. And it's here. It's here already? The app is here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Um, and it's licensed. Licensed. They pay for it. They pay for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... Um, we know though like who owns YouTube and so what I really want to encourage is yeah everyone to set up microgrids before everything belongs to the Google. <laughs> okay, no, team microgrids. <laughs> no, let's talk infrastructure because I think yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it's been there but we haven't really addressed it. I mean I think this is uh, obviously another part of the game that uh, makes it important to think about what's happening with uh, the GAFAMs of this world. So how do we make uh, a network of uh, different, you call it microgrids or uh, feminist servers or that somehow, again, like do not cut themselves out of the world but uh, can make uh, interdependent dependence. <laughs> <laughs> Worn out. Worn out. <laughs> Worn out. Okay, so do we have any finishing word? Or, or any more ideas about the grid? <laughs> the, the infrastructures? Yeah, I, I just also, I think we with Constant uh, in uh, 2019, we will do something on networks with an attitude, and I think some part will be covered to question also and to implement and try out uh, different uh, of these uh, protocols from federated social uh, networks to till uh, uh, delay to tolerant networks. You know, I think also it's, it's very important to uh, not always, eh, and now I hear GAFAM, it became already an acronym, I think. It's yes, Google, da, da, da. Eh, it's just maybe not to mention them, but like, yeah, we are also fast in understanding words or acronyms and take it as, as a word. So uh, instead of mentioning them all the time, I think it's, it's uh, very important to build out uh, our own infrastructures and there are people, of course, testing out, and that doesn't mean you're serviced, you know? Maybe it doesn't work uh, uh, all the time, and uh, maybe we also have to accept that, and also accept uh, to, to learn more, and not say, oh no, that black white box, I don't know, I don't wanna touch it, you know? It's in that black white box that you are creating music. If you don't open your synthesizers, you bought with MOOC. If you don't create your hardware, if you don't open the system, whether it's on a legal level or whether it's on a physical level, it's super important that we are somehow emancipating and decolonize our technologies and create opportunities. And there will be a work session in the beginning of April to try out and uh, make uh, different uh, uh, deployments of that kind of infrastructure. And uh, yes, publish Chicks on Speed on Anarchia server, we would be <laughs> perfect allies, you know, because you would somehow uh, support and uh, if you're uh, identifying with a feminist uh, uh, legacy or <laughs> uh, um, uh, reality, eh? then uh, we, you would support Anarchia <laughs> server, uh, you would support Anarchia server and also the team uh, or the sysadmins who try to administer that infrastructure and maybe one day uh, nobody can come because it's thousand people together trying to download your track, but that it would learn that we can try to make it work. And we are allies in the way to make these other, uh, other these autonomous parallel infrastructures which are there, but like distribute uh, the more, become a node. And, uh, yeah. But uh, just one, um <laughs> now, just one addition to what you what you said. The, the the problem one one still has with this very good idea is that uh, visibility will be a problem. So how do we the solve signal, the signal is invisible? So it's no. How do we solve that people actually find that? You know, the algorithms will not show this. Uh, um, 
you know, they, they will show uh, YouTube and and, uh, and and Facebook results. This is a problem, you know. We no, have but that's maybe if you use certain channels. Eh, if you I understand. No, I understood what you what you are saying, and, eh? and it's good. It's sort of as an as, as an entity and an idea of also something that is protected and is working different, and maybe even uh, um, in a way how uh, how certain money that might be generated. Uh, uh, is distributed all this it's but maybe more but, alternative but how do economy you, than yeah than but money. how do you get how do you get the get, get people to actually know that 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 these i just exist? invited uh, you to come in april and to be with us in a work <laughs> session <laughs> I, I, no, I, I understand have, like uh, open yeah, platforms but to communicate about these things but, yeah, but it's a david goliath situation and that's that's the problem. Yeah, I, think, I, I think maybe it's, 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 if, or if we would not, stand to each other and we would have like a physical we presentation, it yes. seems <laughs> your uh, Goliath uh, uh, to me. So like I think I come out of this position, and I, if it's by identifying as a as a queer like multiverse transversal body, and to try to find a place in this society, maybe yes. we 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 do believe and we do think and we do practice because out of urgency and uh, uh, necessity and uh, whether it gets scaled up as most of these uh, so, uh, most commercial or activity or economic activity in a capitalist way is about scale eh? more 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 it's like uh, maybe that's not anymore the way how we have to uh, look eh? and it's uh, I, it's maybe like what you were referring in in uh, uh, to in your talk eh, about the extension of the body of uh, media and eh, it's maybe uh, not in the eye and then it becomes eh, the scale and the Cartesian way of looking you know but it's about listening and also murmuring and uttering and voicing and <laughs>